Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today we're going to go to old Hollywood and we're going to talk with Greta Garbo. All right, so Greta Garbo is an actress that left Hollywood pretty abruptly, actually. And this morning, when I did my morning meditation, I actually connected to one of my guides in the afterlife, uh, actress Marilyn Monroe, that I, I uh, have a fondness for, a connection to. Um, I connected with her in my meditation. And then about an hour and a half later, I felt connected to Greta Garbo, and I thought, Greta Garbo, I don't really know that much about her. And so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to chat with her. Now she's known for leaving Hollywood, like at the height of her career. Now she left, she was a movie star during the, uh, the um, silent film era and then she left Hollywood, like I think in the early 1940s. Um, and she'd done many movies that were very successful and she transitioned very smoothly into the, um, the uh, kind of golden age of film where she transitioned from being that uh, silent film actress to an actress on the screen and with uh, a voice and her voice she had a thick accent from my understanding and she was Swedish so I know that about her all right so let's connect with her Ooh, my nose is a little itchy sorry you guys it's spring here finally yay and so a little bit of allergies I think all right so Ms. Greta Garbo come on in all right hello nice to meet you hello She's not really fond on speaking, on talking on camera, but we're going to chat because I wanted to um, connect with your energy, especially because there's been a lot of transition lately from old Hollywood actors have moved into the afterlife and, and I feel a connection to the old Hollywood stars and I wanted to connect with you as someone who's a very well-known actress and, and very well respected for the roles that you have, but. I have to ask, so what is the deal? Why did you leave Hollywood? Why? And, and thank you for being um, open to be able to talk to us about that because I know that in human context, you didn't do interviews or anything like that. You just left, you know? And so I'd like to get some insight into that. And perhaps it can be of service and help someone else who might be an actor, or actress, a musician, an entertainer, performer, and inspire them in some way. So why did you leave, Greta? And she says, you just get right to it, don't you, darling? You just get right to it. She says, I like your grit. I like that tenacity. I'm like, thank you. You feel like a very strong woman, Greta. Oh, if only I were, she says, if only I were. So you've been in the afterlife since like the, uh, let's see, it's been a while. I know you died mid 80. You were like 85 when you died. And I know that you died in the 80s, or I'm sorry, the 90s. I thought it was 91, but it's actually 1990. And I asked, I have a friend that likes Greta Garbo, so I asked. And I feel like you wanted your privacy. And I don't know though if like, did you get burned out? Was it just too much work? Um, or were you disenfranchised with Hollywood or what was it? She says, you know, it was any number of things. At the time, I was quite tired. I was quite tired of performance, of performing. I wasn't happy with the roles that I was getting at the time and at the ripe old age of 35, 35, 36. About the same time, Marilyn left the planet. Um, actually, interesting, I'm noticing that. Um, Greta, you left Hollywood. And you're making me feel like it was, you, were, you felt like you were getting old and the choice of movies and roles was going to begin to be limited. Is that, is that accurate? Yes. Yes, but I didn't run away. I think people perceive me as running away from Hollywood and that isn't truly the case. I simply was done. I was done being 
a movie star and I wondered what it would be like to have a normal life, as normal as it could be after being Greta Garbo. Did you return then to Sweden, to your home? She said, I visited, but I stayed in New York mostly. I had come to know this place as my home. And I have many friends here, here stateside in the US. And there wasn't really, there wasn't really a timeline. I didn't know that it would be forever. I didn't know, it just, it just seemed like a temporary or momentary thing. And as time went on, I, I came to appreciate the distance that I had. Eventually the reporters and things, they, they lose interest in you and it's a blessing really. But I did sort of have the opposite effect later on. It, was, it became kind of a thing to be able to get a picture of me, an image of me or, or to interview me and I never quite understood the fascination with my life. Earlier on, yes, of course, the, the Hollywood parties and the experiences, and most people feel that it's so glamorous, but really it's all work, 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 it's work. It's work, it's not, there's not much of a social time. And for those who did socialize, it was just parties. And that gets very, old quickly it, it doesn't really it didn't really fulfill me and I although I entertained suitors and and had men uh, of interest I never really could see myself settling down she has a she does have an accent and I can't quite get her accent as she's speaking but I she definitely has an accent you guys it's it's thick it's a thicker accent I can't do it right it's not Italian or anything it's definitely that Swedish accent um thicker it's a thicker accent um and she says i i couldn't really see myself settling down with someone that was from hollywood because they would want to be there and continue to be a part of it i couldn't ask someone to change their life for me that wouldn't be a fair thing to do especially when it's a dream so many come to Hollywood with you know, stars in their eyes and they dream of making it big. And who, I could not live with myself asking someone to leave all of that just for me. It was easy for me to leave it though, yes, it was. And I did not run away. I, I, want, to, I want to express that I didn't run away, but it was, way, it was too much, too much. I, I simply thought I would be leaving, I would be taking a break for some time, an undetermined amount of time you would say today. I didn't realize it would be forever. So were you sad about that? Did you, do you feel, do you have any regret about not being back in the public eye or not doing movies? I mean, do you have any regret about that? Did you miss making movies? If I could freeze time, she says, and have a fountain of, of youth, a, a magic potion to keep me young, I could have done movies a while longer. I couldn't bear the thought or the idea of being cast in roles that did not fulfill my, my need to be excellent at my craft. There's a great deal of integrity. She's like speaking with a great deal of integrity about acting and how she knew that she was on this at this pl point where it was going to be done soon she felt like because back in those days the age thing was a big deal you think there's ageism now there really was then like mid 30s that's old for an actress you know and she felt that things were starting to change and she didn't want to be known as the actress that aged on camera she just didn't want to be known that way she says much better to leave as a legend you do think highly of yourself. I can feel that you have a confidence about you. I would like to think so, yes.
thank you. I would like to think so. And yet I kind of feel you almost angry or there's an unrest about that, about having to leave, almost like you had to leave, like you didn't have a choice, like you had to leave if you wanted to be remembered by your body of work and that you were concerned that the quality of your body of work was going to be less and less and less because of the the roles available to older women actors and that's not old 35 is not old let's be clear is that accurate yes part of me was angry bitter yes but a bit bitter but that's not why i didn't give um that is not the reason why i did not give interviews i simply just wanted to be a average person return to a regular life or 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 know a regular life i I didn't expect, I suppose a part of me died when I left and I didn't really get a new life in this life because there was a part of me that felt robbed of opportunity because of the structure of things, the nature of things in Hollywood. There weren't the kind of roles that there are today for women there weren't serious roles like that. Everything was quite overly expressive and very dramatic and that gets so tiresome, so boring. It does not challenge you and, and, and stimulate you in the ways that you need that. You need that to feel alive. So were you interested in play acting or theater? Because you could have been into theater. She says, no, not really. She says, I had many friends in theater. And I enjoyed watching their performances. They were wonderful, but I, didn't, I, I did not understand how they could carry on about that. Especially later on, as time went on, I, it just it didn't seem an option for me, a fit for me at that time. After you've been in film, it, for me, it seemed like I reached the top of the pinnacle and to do anything else would be less than and I, I know it feels as though I gave up and a part of me did, a part of me did. So was there mental health things? Was there like, or, or was there addictions or anxieties or was there other things going on for you that kind of brought you to this point? She says a breaking point. I didn't have a breakdown, dear. I did not have a breakdown. One of the most sane things I ever did was to leave Hollywood. One of the most sane things I did, and I did keep some very wonderful friendships over my lifetime. And in fact, and she showed me the, like Liza Minnelli, Judy Garland was her mom. She shows me that, like Minnelli. I don't know why, but she doesn't say Judy Garland. She says Minnelli, the Minnellis. I don't know why she's referring to that. If you know, put it in the comments below. And then she says someone named Stan, I'm not sure who Stan is. And then I see her like at performances, like watching other people like plays or at a club, listening to music like Frank Sinatra, like um, I see her, she's showing me actually Sammy Davis Jr. She's showing me him. For some reason, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if she frequented Hollywood at all or not, or if she just left and wanted to stay the heck away. Um, but she's showing me that. So I don't know if time-wise, if that was during her career or after. I think it would be maybe after. But it seemed like kind of a big deal when she would come back and try to return or try to attend something, like even go to lunch or go to any kind of a luncheon or an event. It would be kind of a big thing. So it kind of seems like she tried to when she came to visit in Hollywood or or in to Los Angeles to visit it seems like it was more quiet and intimate and she preferred that so can you talk a little bit about mental health and that kind of thing did were there things going on um, within you that caused this kind of need for to leave Hollywood and she said are you talking about pills many people took pills there, there were pills for everything to wake up to go to sleep to she says, that didn't really impact me much. She says, I did take some sleeping medication at, at some points because I was so, so, um, I was so overworked that it felt really difficult to sleep, to go to sleep, it felt like. 
she feels, feels like a real thinker too, like almost like a little bit of an anxiety or overactive mind. It seems like very thinking, very thought, think, 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 think. Mm -hmm. And no children? Did you not have children? No children? No, but I feel like you were, ooh, I don't know if I want to say that. Um, I feel like she may have been pregnant or lost a baby, had a miscarriage or something. And I feel like you were dating or you were either interested in or actually dating somebody who was married or who was with somebody else. And that may have been like a no-no a kind of a thing, but I feel like you really genuinely cared for this person. If you guys know what that is, write it in the comments below who that might be. And she said her, she's showing me her mom got sick. And so she went to be with her mother. It looks like family, like her mom. Um, home, back home, she's saying. Going to visit back home to be with her mother. That's what she shows me. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, she says, I can't complain about my life and the turn of events in my life. And I know many people picture me as being this lonely old hag. <laughs> This lonely old woman, she says, lonely old woman. She makes me feel like it's a little hag, uh, you know, she says. And yes, if it's if it seems superficial, beauty was very important. Yes, it was important. And I knew, I knew that. And I didn't want to age publicly. I didn't want to be compared to who I was or to myself. That's the worst comparison you can have is to yourself. And... She said, I didn't want to be known as some old hag. And maybe that's perhaps that's selfish. And I wasn't a miserable old woman. I wasn't a, a sad woman. She has a lot of like, she's kind of sassy. She's got strong, strong um, opinions and views and things. She feels political, like she has some opinions. Um, interesting, I feel like she was a fan of, of the Reagans, like Ronald Reagan, I feel like she was a fan. And I don't know if it's because he was like good looking or what the deal was, but she was a fan of him. I feel like she knew Nancy too, that's kind of interesting. Um, and I don't know what her party affiliation would be, but I just, I feel that, I just gonna share that. And I think that's it. Is there anything else that you would like to share? Any kind of inspiration you'd like to give to others? And she, it's like she wants to say, don't give up. And she says, it takes hard work. But if you're doing something that you truly enjoy, then do it. Do it while you can. She says, do it while you can. As much as you can, while you can. While the opportunity is there and while, while it's ripe. Do it while you can, she says. That's her, that's advice. Thank you very much. That was lovely. Thank you. And I can see she has a sister also. It looks like she has a sister. So, All right. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. You've been watching a video channeling session with Greta Garbo in the afterlife. Be sure to pop your comments below, fill in some of the gaps and the blanks here because you know here at Above Life Channel when I'm doing a channel, I'm very real, very authentic as a psychic and a medium. And I don't always know all the answers, you guys. I don't Google it up and memorize things and do research because why? Because you guys can do that on your own. I like to have conversations that are insightful, interesting, and that are going to what? Inspire your spirit, give you some hope, and encourage you to live your best life because this is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks so much for watching.